Right in this video, we'll quickly see how to set up back endless in Android Studio or in your project in order to make sure that it works and can actually save data online. So we're going to start a new Android Studio project and I'm going to call this project the same as I had my app there, which is called test app. So I'm going to call it test app. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest the same. Maybe just call this one 2018. OK, and then I'm going to go to next and next and empty activity and we can leave that as the main activity and say finish and now let's just wait for this application to quickly refresh right so we've got this app up and running and now we want to set up this app for backendless so one of the first things that we'll need to do is if we, if we go back to the website and we go i'm going to go to a new tab here i'm going to say backendless.com and open up back in this again to get to the documentation so i'm going to go to documentation api documentation going to the getting started guide right so if the page refreshed you can see that they're in the quick start guide they tell us how we can set up the android application so there's a few things that they that they do here uh, we'll look at that now uh, i want to go to the client setup quickly or the client side setup just wait for all of these pictures to load so make sure you go on the on the right hand side then you can also go to the quick start guide there and go to the client setup this one okay so if we're in the client setup side uh, you can see that they say in the gradle setup we should add these dependencies okay so you're going to take this implementation there i'm just going to copy it there Take that imp implementation group and you can see it must go into your Gradle file in under dependencies. So let's just open up Android Studio there again. So if I open up Android Studio uh, in the Gradle scripts, go to build.gradle and somewhere here where we add the implementations, I'm just going to add mine there. You can see implementation group, backendless, name backendless and the version. But now it tells us avoid using the plus inversion numbers as it can lead to unpredictable bolts. So we should remove the plus sign there, but we need to get the specific version that it's currently at. So I'm gonna go back to Firefox, and you can see that they, they say yeah, it's, it's not recommended to use the plus sign. You should go to Maven Central. So I'm gonna open that in a new tab, and this repository here will tell me which one is the newest version of Backendless. So the newest version of Backendless is then 5.0.2. So in Android Studio, then, then 5.0.2 will be the newest version. And then you can sync your project. Now, after your project has been synced, uh, there should not be any errors, then you're fine. So if there's new versions coming out and you want to make use of those new versions, uh, then you can just come and change the version number here. Right, so the next step that you need to do is to set up Android Studio or to set up back endless in Android Studio. If we go back to the website again, and we can close this one now. Uh, they say also, if you work with real-time database and real-time messaging, you should also include this. So we'll, we'll look at that later on. Uh, then if you work from SDK uh, Maven, then you need to do this. Then they also say in the Android manifest, you should add this one line. So I'm gonna copy this line quickly. Uh, go back to Android Studio. And then let's open up the manifest folder. Inside of the manifest folder, there's only one file. So you open up that one file. And inside of this file, we must paste the permission to use the internet. Well, you don't need to paste really. You can just add the user's uh, permission and then search for the internet as well. That will also work. Okay, so copy and paste is the easiest there, but you can add permission to use the internet also yeah so we're basically just saying that our app will be able to use the internet and we must tell the user that we will be using the internet and that's why this permission must be there now if we go back to the website again they say then we must initialize our app uh, by calling this uh, and i think they've got a better version if we go to the top here they've got uh, they've they basically say, yeah, this is how we should set the URL and initialize our app. And uh, we need to have these default values. Okay, so we're going to do this now. So basically, what we've done so far is in the Gradle scripts, in the build.gradle, we've added the implementation to get the version, the correct version of Backendless. And we went into the manifest 
to get permission to use the internet. Okay, so now the next thing is to go into your Java folder and create a new Java file. I'm going to say new Java file. And the new Java class that we want to create here is the application class. So I'm just going to call this test application. And then say, okay, you can name your application class whatever you want. So basically what an application class is, it's the class that runs the very first, it's the very first thing that your application runs even before your main activity. So remember in your manifest file, we say the main activity is the main one and that one should launch. But even before your main activity launches, your application class will launch so by just creating a class with the word application in it will not work so we need to say extends there and you need to say extend application from the android.app library okay so this now makes it the application class but also if i just leave it like this it won't work we need to go into the manifest file and add the name property there under the application tag and you can see because that test application class of ours extends application, it will automatically pick it up as the application class. So you can just select it and you can see now in the application tag, before the settings part closes, somewhere there you need to add the name property. Now when my application starts, the very first file that will run is this file called test application so it will go into this test application java file it will run whatever is in here and this file will only close when the last thing of your application closes so remember your application class is the one that starts right at the beginning and it's the very last thing that ends so i'm going to right click there and i want to generate uh, override methods and i want to get the on create method so make sure you get the on create method there and now we can go and add a few values here inside of the application class. So this is basically the values that we want to put in the application class. So uh, remember where we are at the quick start guide again. Uh, right at the top, the quick start guide. And if you go down, these are the default values that we want. So I'm going to copy those values, go into Android Studio. And these are the values that we want to get defined right at the top. But... These values will not be correct, so you can leave out those values in the strings. We will place in other values there in right now. Okay, so we're going to have the application ID, the API key, and the server URL. Let's go to the website again, and then in order to initialize your app, you need those lines as well. Backendless.set URL, as well as init app. So let's open up Android Studio again inside of the onCreate that's where we will start using these okay uh, for that alt enter alt enter will give you uh, the import statement there we will not use defaults there we're just going to use the server url we will not use defaults and we will not use defaults there we will just use it as it is okay so we've got our server url defined there our application id there and our api key there and those are the values that we will use so for now, they are, are all of them are basically useless. We need to enter some values there. So for the URL there, you need to type in HTTPS, two forward slashes, API dot backendless dot com. And that will be the server URL where we need to connect to. But now, if it connects to the server URL, we also need our unique application ID and our unique server or api key so go back to the website again where we had our app defined so this is my app we called it test app in the previous video and you remember if we go to the home button there i'll have an application id as well as an android api key so first take your application id so there's my application id yours uh, will be different so just copy it from there go back to android studio and that's your application id you can paste it there Go back to the website again, go to the Android API key, and if you if you think that somebody else has got your API key, you can just refresh there and gener regenerate that key, and then copy it. So you can copy that API key, that Android API key, go back and paste it in your API key. Right, so now we've basically set up Android Studio, or this project called Test App 2018, to work with my database that I've got online that's called Test App. 
or my application called test app. So you can see there's one API that I've already run for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, so if we go to data now, this will this is where all my data tables will be. So you can just keep it open at the data tab there. So just to run through the steps again, uh, what you need to do right at the beginning is to go into your build.gradle, make sure you've got this implementation there. So if you missed it, you can just type it there from the video also. This is what you need for your implementation. And then you click, click on sync now so that your application can sync the library of backenders. The second step was to go into your manifest and make sure that you have this line of coding to say that we need the internet connection. Your third step was to create this application class by just right clicking there and saying new Java class. Create your test application class. The class should extend the application. You must have the application ID, API key, server URL, and then these few lines to just set up the URL and initialize your app. Where did we get these three values? Remember from the website, if you go to your home button, there's the application ID and there's your Android API key. Right, so you paste those two values. Your server URL will always stay the same. It will be api.backenders.com. So just leave that one the same. And then these two lines of coding will basically then set up your application. Also remember, if you create your test application class, that in your manifest file, you need to add the name property uh, to add your test application as the very first thing that will run when the application starts. Okay, so this is basically setting up your application. And if you are able to type back endless.set URL without any errors like mine here, yeah, then you know that your library in the build.gradle file actually synced and you've got the library. Now let's quickly see and test if we can get something to run on this application. So I'm going to go into my main activity quickly. Or well, before we do that, let's create a custom class. So I'm going to say new Java class and I'm going to call this person. It's a simple Java class, uh, nothing weird about it. I'm going to say private a string, let's call it name. And we have a private string surname. And uh, we'll get back to this later on. But basically what Backendless wants is just the normal default constructor and some getters and setters. So I'm going to go and say generate the getters and the setters for me, which is those two. And then we can also create... Uh, generate the constructor and we're going to say select none and that's just the basically the no argument constructor where we can set the name to null and we can set the surname to null okay so this is just a basic java class but this class now in java will become in my database a new table so in java classes in back endless it becomes a table. In Java, a variable right at the top, instance variable, becomes a column for that specific table in backendness. Okay, so we've got the person table now with two columns, name and surname, basically. Now, if I go back to main activity, I can now create a new person object. So I can say person, person equals new person, initialize it and I can go and say let's for this person we set the name to be John and for this person we can set the surname to be Rambo right so now we have a new object and this object will basically become one line in the table called person so the way we do this is the following we'll start off by saying let's hack into the back endless or get into the back endless libraries there and we're going to call data dot of and you can see there at once now the table name so the table name in this case will be person dot class so that's the table name called person it's a class in java and then we're going to call save now you can see there's two two uh versions there the first version will be for normal java to just say go and save that entity but with android we need to do everything in the background so we'll need to use the second one so you can see it's first the person entity and then an async callback so the person entity will just be this person object that i want to save and the second argument will be new async callback just start typing a there and it will open up this whole thing for you 
Now we'll get into this part again later on. So we're just testing now to see if we can save this new person to backenders. So I'll explain later on what this handle response and handle fault and all of those mean. But for now, let's just see if something gets saved into backenders. So I'm going to run this application quickly on a virtual device. So there the app is running. I'm not going to pause the video now. Uh, you can see my Gradle build is running at the bottom. Uh, it's trying to initialize the app or trying to install the app on the device. And while this build is running, let's just quickly go to the website. Uh, there we go to the website. And you can see that on the website, if I go to my data table or to my database now there, uh, we have basically nothing at this stage in, under app tables. But as soon as my application gets run now, let me just wait for it to quickly run. Uh, as soon as my application runs, we're creating a new person table with new data in it. So you see there, my app is running. It says only hello world. Remember, we just uh, did something in the background there, so it won't show anything here. But now if this part is done, it means that we have now saved something to this database. So if I refresh this now, you can see a new person table was created. And in the person table, if I click on it, I've got a column called name, I've got a column called surname, and I've got the values John Rambo saved in it. So for every table, you'll have an object ID. So every object in, in backend this will have a unique ID, this long ID. It will have an owner ID, a created, and an updated. So you can change the columns also here under schema, but it must be the same in your Java class. So you can see my Java class was called person, and the fields was called named, and surname and those fields then became the columns so if we go back to android studio quickly uh, we can save another value there let's call it peter pan and run this again let's go back to firefox and open up the virtual device so there i think it's it will refresh now okay so there it runs there it runs, it says hello world, let's refresh it here. Now we should have a second entry there. There we go, we have the second entry called Peter Pan, also in the same name and surname column. So this is basically it for setting up back endless for your application. In the next video, we will dive a bit deeper into what back endless can do.